the recap. So we're here live in San Francisco for Citrix Synergy where the world is kind of spinning in their direction. They're a tech company that's changing the game. We heard graphics, expect some games to come out of them. I think that's what he's basically saying. Well, it's not really an announcement, but we're reading the tea leaves and I can guarantee you that HDX will be one of those core technologies that allows us to have better graphics at the edge on any device. Love the vision. I hope that product can come out faster. Uh, we all want big data visualization. We want better graphics. Doctors want better visualization of their stuff. So the iPad and the iPhone are changing the game. Wendy, thanks for coming on the, the Cube, VP of Go Global Marketing of Abiquo. 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 <laughs> it's <Bam>. okay. <laughs> it's okay. okay. It's the, you know, the company that, that has a hard name to say. There you go. So um, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Obviously, we've known each other on, on Twitter, and we have mutual friends. Talk about the, um, what you're doing right now, but you were at VMware. Now you're at a company that actually spans across not just VMware, a lot of the virtualization players. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, Abiquo, uh, so let me start with yes, you're right. I was at VMware for about three years. I was actually uh, part of the uh, Akimbi acquisition that they did. So uh, familiar with the lab manager product, which became the Redwood product. Um, and so coming to Abiquo made a lot of sense because it's a very similar um, um, offering in that it's, uh, you know, offering, pl uh, it's offering a, um, infrastructure as a service for the enterprise. And um, uh, what, I, what I really love about being at Abiquo is, you're right, it doesn't just work on VMware, it works across six hypervisors, including Zen Server and, um, and Zen and KVM and VMware and all of those. Um, and so, you know, it, it truly does release you from the, the lock-in of, of the hypervisor. Vendor lock-in has been a big issue with tech. I mean, obviously, we talk about Oracle all the time, um, but you have openness with, with Citrix. Uh, SAPs, open companies. You have these open initiatives. So, building these data centers, it's a multi-vendor environment. So you have, they have to deal with multiple technologies, yeah, and absolutely. maybe some division has something else. So, are you seeing the same thing with your with your, with your company? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, whether uh, it's a service provider or it's an enterprise, we're definitely seeing, you know, uh, people that you'd assume would be 100% VMware environments. Uh, you know, we're starting to see them say, no, I've got different areas that are uh, a Zen server or, or just even Zen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're trying to figure out ways to manage that and not have different virtualization platform management elements on top. And so uh, Abiquo, essentially, that's one of the, the key features is it allows you to manage all of these different hypervisors across different data centers as well. So you've been in the cloud business and virtualization business for many years. And <laughs> even just it. in the past 18 <laughs> years, I mean, 18 months, 18, 18 years, years, damn, 18 <laughs> years, there was no cloud. Get a little tired, day three. Um, no, seriously, like, just, it's been a massive shift. I mean, go back to our cloud club days when, you know, people were coming together, a lot of startups, a lot of developers, you know, a lot of Ruby, and Heroku was around, Spring wasn't even, it was just developing. A lot's changed. Yes. Where are we now, and just compare it to, like, 14, 18 months ago. Oh, well, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I guess, uh, at least from my perspective, I definitely feel like there's, you know, there was a lot of people, um, trying to figure out what it was and you know every day there was a new analyst who was trying to figure out the defin their definition and and modifying their definition and I changing think their market size <laughs> exactly <laughs> understanding who the vendors are um, cloud I, washing uh, yes yes there's a there and I think cloud washing still exists today mm -hmm. private um, cloud yes um, but I definitely think that uh, we've come a long way like you've said there's been uh, you know there's been a change in people understanding not just okay what is cloud but uh, I get conceptually what it is, now I need to figure out how do I do it? What do I do about it? Um, and so I definitely think the, the market's at that at that point right now. There's a big boom in consultancies, whether there's boutiques that are growing, we know, you know mutual friends have started out with consultancies, one guy, two guys, now 18, 20, growing right. like crazy, and, and name a few off the top of my head, but also on the big guys, CSC, mm -hmm. and you see you know the, the big consultancies. It's not about outsourcing anymore, it's about just construction or, or advice. Is that is that what you're seeing on the services side? Um, yeah, well, I definitely see that, uh, you know, they're, they're offering advice and, and we've got, you know, to your point, big agencies who are coming out and creating uh, uh, entire practices around this to, to help folks. I think one of the, um, the interesting pieces is, you know, if you talk to an analyst today, they'll say the reason why cloud isn't, isn't adopting faster is because uh, of lack of standards and, um, and, and in some cases lack of you know understanding truly what all of the pieces are that need to be uh, you know handled and I think um, a, a, another reason why I joined Abiquo was is 
part of their offering is they have a, a business policy engine inside the, the software that allows you to go and set business policy and set rules. And so by users, you can determine you know, what, what type of service level are you going to get, what type of experience will you get. So it takes some of that standardization and that, um, the, those business policies and, and automates those. What are you seeing right now for your business? I mean, first of all, just tell everyone about the company, how old it is, how many people there are, funding, status, product status. Okay. Because yeah, not many people know about it, so we're just going to yeah. get a plug in for yeah. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Abaco was founded in 2006, actually, as an open source product, um, and we just still do have an open source uh, version. Um, it, it, in 2009, we started to develop against our enterprise, and we've added a lot of additional features, including a uh, feature-rich GUI, um, and so uh, uh, the, the company is roughly about uh, 50 people. We were founded in Barcelona, Spain. Um, we do have headquarters right down the street at uh, Redwood Shores. We share the campus with Oracle. And, um, and the product is, is currently shipping. I mean, we have uh, you know, customers that are both service providers and enterprises using the offering. Um, so it's a, it's a How good many place. employees? Um, there's roughly about 50 employees. So a small company. You guys are growing. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest things driving your uh, growth? Um, hmm. So, uh, you know, that's a good question. I think some of the, the things that are driving our growth are obviously, as I mentioned before, the, the market momentum has moved from what is a cloud to, um, okay, what am I supposed to do about this? Like, how do I start to implement this? I've got the challenge of, you know, virtual sprawl on one hand and managing my day-to-day -day operations, and on the other hand, I've got my CIO telling me, go do something cloud-like. The business units are complaining, <laughs> yeah. we need services right now. Um, and and so, you know, having that platform in between that allows you to manage it, but also deliver self-service provisioning, um, I, I think is is what's fueling our interest and in, and um, and the market. So Citrix, big competitor, is VMware, and um, Citrix is trying to water that down a little bit by saying, no, we're not so much competitors anymore. We got this whole surging iPad business end user collaboration thing going on. They're trying to kind of distance the conversation, or at least if they do, it comes up, they say choice. You've been at VMware bef uh, in the past. Uh, how much has VMware changed in the past four years? I mean, go back four years, VMware was a completely different company. Yeah, no, absolutely. What's your perspective <laughs> on that? <laughs> Feel free to share. <laughs> Open Maybe the kimono. <laughs> Maybe I should have you share, uh, John. We've been around uh, around the virtualization slash cloud space for some time. Yeah. Um, I feel like an analyst. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. Blogger, but I'm also a blogger. So, no, but virtualization, I mean, VMware locked in on the enterprise. Right. And the cloud kind of took them by, by storm. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I was on record. I forget what event I said it, but basically, you know, EMC World, VMware missed the cloud. I mean, they missed the public cloud because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they were so locked into their enterprise licensing stuff. Right. I mean, that's a true statement, right? Well, you know, I have to say, I don't know if they, you know, I don't know if they missed the cloud, and I don't know if the public cloud is truly the the place where they're gonna they're gonna grow. I mean, obviously, you know, the the relationship that um, Citrix has with as Amazon having the Zen platform in it, as well as now Rackspace, um, you know, the the public cloud may be the battle where you know Citrix gets the upper hand and and VMware longs for it. Um, on the flip side, though, it really comes back down to w what will the cloud look like five to seven years from now? Will it be a private cloud? Will it be a hybrid cloud? Will it be a public? Certainly, cloud. VMware moved mountains in their strategy change with Maritz. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you see that at last year at VMworld. Yeah. It was just a massive, okay, this is a platform. They're going after the operating system of cloud. Right. They own by EMC. They got the disk. So you got, you know, <laughs> them marching, Citrix over here laying out, in essence, a cloud <laughs> operating system. Right. So, I mean, you're in a good spot. Your company's in a good spot because there's also other versions of stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I think what we see is, you know, again, going back to the, the comment I made before, you know, we used to think that, especially from, from VMware, we used to think that all enterprises were 100% virtualized on VMware, and, um, you know, whether or not it's it's the shift in strategy of VMware moving to offering platform as a service, storage as a service, getting into the as service market, or diversifying their overall portfolio, um, we're starting to see enterprises say, okay, do I truly need to be 100% VMware virtualized, or can I have a uh, diversification of different platforms and then manage them holistically using something like Abiquo. Um, you know, it gives them the option to, to go in and say maybe a, a high performing group like uh, finance or whatever needs to ha be on a, a VMware environment, but I can take my uh, marketing group and put them on a Zen environment and the, the cost structure is different.
What are the biggest challenges you're seeing for the customers you talk to that, that call you in? And, and describe the environments that you go into. Um, I'm sorry, can you? What's the top challenges that oh, of, your, top of your customers? And, then, and describe the environment that, that, that they're in. Well, you know, again, I think the I think the top challenges are we talk to people who are at the, at this point where they need to come up with something that's associated with cloud, and um, they've got business units that are yeah. saying you're not being responsive to me. I'm just going to go externally, mm -hmm. um, and IT is uh, you know they're concerned like what is the future of what IT is going to look like, and so you know their day to day concerns of dealing with VM sprawl on one hand, um, and new data centers and and everyday demands, and on the other hand they've got you know business units who they're, they're not being served and they've got CIOs who've just been to a new conference and they've heard the newest cloud thing and they want the newest yeah. cloud thing. So, you know, how do you deal with bridging those two gaps? Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you a question then. So, Hypervisor, you know, was commoditized, giving away for free, that was great, great trend there. Now you're seeing past given away for free by VMware, given away platform as a service. Um, what's the direction of the management of the Hypervisor? Uh, we had one storage vendor come in and say that you know storage functionality, like thin provisioning and tiering, is going to move up to the hypervisor. Mm -hmm. So hypervisor is going to get more robust. So what are the challenges you see in the management space of the hypervisor? Um, so that's a that's a great question, and I think um, you know the the. What's interesting is the the management I think is going to get richer and smarter in general, right? And it, it's not going to be just tied to the hypervisor. It's going to start to span across the entire data center. Um, so, for example, you know we work really closely with partners like NetApp to um, look at their storage and allow us to tier their storage and serve serve uh, that to the users as different you know, whether it's the, the business class of storage or the coach class of storage. So, you know, as, as more people want to move to as a service um, yeah. internal environments, they're going to have to figure out what, um, you know, is it going to be, they're going to deliver storage as a service, compute as a service. Great, we're here, it's in uh, siliconangle.com's extensive coverage of Citrix Synergy live from Moscone Center. We've been broadcasting for over 12 hours of programming on siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv, and our research partner, wikibon.org, has got all the free research. We have Wendy Pirelli with Abiquo. Thank you for coming on Inside the Cube. We really appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. Uh, management of the hypervisor is going to be big. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay.